from Hollywood, California. Ladies and gentlemen in our live audience, as well as of our thousands of internet viewers worldwide, welcome to a celebration of the best new creative talent in science fiction and fantasy. L. Ron Hubbard presents Writers and Illustrators of the Future, the most enduring and influential contests in the history of the genre.
The artist works with life and with universes. The artist is looked upon to start things. The artist injects the spirit of life into a culture. And through his creative endeavors, the writer works continually to give tomorrow a new form. Philosopher and best-selling author L. Ron Hubbard saw that a successful writer could use his talents to pay forward to invest in the future of the arts and lend a hand to promising aspiring artists. After a long and remarkable literary career, he created and endowed two groundbreaking contests to help the next generation of writers and illustrators. L. Ron Hubbard presents Writers and Illustrators of the Future. For over a quarter century, these contests have discovered and nurtured the new stars of science fiction. The Writers and Illustrators of the Future contests are open to all non-professional writers and artists. There is no submission fee. Entrants submit manuscripts or art samples anonymously to an all-star jury. Some of the best-selling and most critically acclaimed writers and the most outstanding illustrators in the field. Thousands of submissions arrive from across the globe. To date, the contests have received entries from 141 countries, from Albania to Mexico to Zimbabwe. Next, a blue ribbon panel of judges winnows down the submissions choosing the best of the best to receive the top three prizes each quarter, 12 writers and 12 artists over the course of the year. Each winning story is then assigned to a winning artist who creates an original illustration. The stories and artwork are published together in the annual anthology, L. Ron Hubbard Presents Writers of the Future. The contest's anthologies form a must-read list of who's hot and new in speculative fiction. In addition, the winners receive impressive trophies and substantial cash prizes, the largest in the field of speculative fiction, enough to change the lives of budding creative artists. Another significant benefit to the careers of these new stars is a week-long intensive workshop taught by prominent writers and artists in the field. This hands-on, no-nonsense training helps to shape not only the imaginations and techniques of the students, but also gives them an understanding of the business of publishing. As a finale to the experience, winners and their guests attend a lavish awards event, a celebration not just of their achievements, but in anticipation of the great work to come. This gala has been held in some of the nation's cornerstones of culture, science, and technology. The United Nations, the Kennedy Space Center, the Science Fiction Museum, the Caltech Athenaeum, the Johnson Space Center, San Diego's Air and Space Museum, and Hollywood's famous Roosevelt Hotel. Keynote speakers have included major figures in science, arts and entertainment, and the aerospace industry. By any measure, Writers and Illustrators of the Future is the gold standard in the field. Past writer winners have gone on to publish well over 700 novels and 3,000 short stories. They have become international bestsellers and have won the most prestigious accolades in the field, including the Hugo, the Nebula, the World Fantasy, the Bram Stoker, the British Science Fiction Award, and the Locus Award, and even mainstream literary kudos, such as the National Book Award, the National Endowment for the Arts Award, the Quill Award, and the Newbery Medal. The Illustrator winners have produced more than 500 book and magazine covers, over 4,500 illustrations, 350 comics, and 1.3 million art prints in circulation. They have had national exhibitions in major venues and museums. Their names have appeared in the credits of best-selling computer games, more than 30 television shows, and dozens of major motion pictures. They have received numerous prestigious honors, such as the Hugo Award, the Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award, an Emmy, and the Academy Award. 
hundreds of civic and community proclamations have honored the contest's impact on publishing, equality, and exploration. Among them, Publishers Weekly called the Writers of the Future contest the most enduring forum to showcase new talent in the genre. The writers and illustrators of the future contests are the most enduring and influential contests in the history of science fiction and fantasy. They have left their mark on not only those who have won, but also the tens of thousands who have been inspired to enter. To keep writing, keep illustrating, and keep creating. Injecting life into our culture. Giving tomorrow a new form. Please welcome our Mistress of Ceremonies, Senior Vice President of Author Services, the Literary Agency of L. Ron Hubbard, Ms. Gunhild Jacobs. Thank you very much. On behalf of everyone at Author Services, Galaxy Press, the publisher of the Writers of the Future Anthology, and the esteemed judges, let me welcome each and every one of you as we honor this year's winners of the Writers and Illustrators of the Future Contest. In the opening video, you saw a glimpse of our successes from more than a quarter century of the contest, and this year is no exception. 2010 was a banner year for our past writers and illustrator winners. On the writer's side, our alumni published 222 short stories and 48 novels in 2010. Jay Lake was the most prolific, publishing 27 short stories and one novel. Patrick Rothfuss' new novel, Wise Man's Fear, immediately shot to number one on the New York Times bestseller list, and Jo Beverly also made this prestigious list with her novel, An Unlikely Countess. Four of our past winners, Elliot de Bodar, Eric James Stone, J. Ken Kathleen Cheney, and Nettie O'Carafor, are on this year's final ballot for the Nebula Award. Elliot and Eric are also on the Hugo ballot, both in the same category for best short story. Jason Fisher, Kat Sparks, and Patty Jensen were nominated for Dittmar Awards. Ken Scholes won the Prix Imaginales Award in France for his novel, Lamentation. Steve Saville was nominated for the British Fantasy Award, and Karen Joy Fowler won the World Fantasy Award for Best Short Story. Our artists have been busy as well. Past Illustrator winners have won eight major awards, including Brian Beers with the Frame My Future Award, Irina Kovalenko with the Art Slant New York Award, and Tyler Carter won a Student Emmy for his short animated feature. Robert Castillo won a prize in the New York International Children's Film Festival and an honorable mention in the Toronto Film Festival. And finally, our 1992 illustrator winner, Sean Tan, won the Hugo Award for Best Pro Artist, the Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award, and the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. And so it is appropriate that tonight's event is being held here in the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, where the very first Academy Awards were presented in 1929. I would like to first acknowledge several distinguished guests and celebrities who are joining us as guest presenters for our awards. Please hold your applause until all are announced. From Fox TV's Family Guy and the voice of Craig Ferguson's robot sidekick on The Late Late Show, Josh Robert Thompson. John Mariano has appeared on The Tonight Show, The Sopranos, the cult hit comedy It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and has won an Emmy for his work on Steven Spielberg's Animaniacs. Jim Meskimen was in the films Apollo 13, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, Frost Nixon, and the NBC hit comedy Parks and Recreation. You will also hear his voice in the upcoming X-Men First Class, as well as in audiobooks from Galaxy Audio. Joe Pruitt is an award-winning comic writer and editor. Over the last 20 years, he's been writer, editor, and creative director for Caliber Comics before working on numerous X-Men titles for Marvel. He's now head of his own company, Desperado Publishing. Let's give them all a warm welcome. The 
writers and illustrators of the Future Contest receive thousands of submissions each year from aspiring creative artists from all over the world. Tonight, we are very pleased to see how many past contest winners and entrants have come in to join us in the audience. Will all past winners and entrants please stand up and be acknowledged? Our blue ribbon panel of judges is the bedrock of these awards. Some of the most notable creators in their fields generously give their time to select, to select the very best among the many entries. These talented professionals mark the rich past and present of speculative fiction and help to create the next generation of writers and artists. Please hold your applause until all are announced. Kevin J. Anderson is the number one international best-selling author of more than 100 books as well as being a comic writer, anthology editor, and record producer. Chief Scientist of Air Force Space Command, Dr. Doug Beeson, has written 14 high-tech novels. He also served in the President's Science Office in Washington, DC. A PhD physicist, Gregory Benford, is the author of such landmark science fiction novels as Timescape, Heart of the Comet, Artifact, and Eater. He has been nominated for four Hugo Awards and 12 Nebula Awards. In addition to his numerous book covers, Vincent DeFate has produced art for IBM, Reader's Digest, and National Geographic. He was commissioned by NASA to create the official painting of the International Space Station. A former contest winner, Eric Flint, has written over 50 novels, both solo and in collaboration. He has also edited many anthologies and was founder and editor of Jim Bain's Universe online magazine. Award-winning artist, radio host, voiceover artist, and longtime illustrators of the future judge, Dr. Laura Brodian Fries. Winner of the Hugo and Five Chesley Awards, Devin Hickman has published over 450 covers and also created a series of science fiction poster stamps for the US Postal Service, the government's first official recognition of this genre. 1985 Writers of the Future contest winner, author of numerous acclaimed novels and short stories and winner of the Nebula and Bram Stoker Awards, Nina Kiriki Huffman. Science fiction author and editor, hold of NASA's Achievement Medal and the Isaac Asimov Memorial Award, Dr. Yodi Kondo. Award-winning artist, graphic designer, filmmaker, photographer, and illustrator, Ron Lindan, is the coordinating judge for the Illustrators of the Future Contest. Hugo nominee Val Lakey Lindan and her husband Ron Lindan wrote and illustrated three children's books. Val has been an illustrator of the future judge since the beginning of the contest. Co-author of the New York Times best-selling Star Wars Young Jedi Knight series, as well as the new Star Challengers books, Rebecca Mesta. One of the nation's premier book cover artists, including the Chronicles of Narnia, X-Files Ruins, and the Star Wars New Jedi Order series, Cliff Nelson. Winner of every major science fiction award, the legendary creator of Ringworld and the known space series, Larry Niven. Multiple award winner, best-selling writer, and popular columnist, Dr. Jerry Purnell. With his co-author, Larry Niven, he wrote such classics as The Mode in God's Eyes and Lucifer's Hammer. Philip K. Dick and World Fantasy Award winner, author of the original novel for the new Pirates of the Caribbean film On Stranger Tides, and the lead workshop instructor for Writers of the Future, Tim Powers. Mike Resnick is the genre's all-time leading award winner for short fiction. He is also the author of 62 novels and over 250 short stories, and he has edited more than 40 anthologies. Best-selling author Christine Catherine Rush has won major awards for her work in mystery, romance, science fiction, and fantasy. She was also the editor of the legendary Magazine of Fantasy and Science Fiction. Called the Dean of Canadian Science Fiction, Robert J. Sawyer has won every major science fiction award. His novel was the basis for the hit ABC TV series, Flash Forward. Former contest winner and now successful novelist, K.D. Wentworth is not only the first reader and coordinating judge for Writers of the Future, but is also the editor of the annual anthology. A former contest grand prize winner, Dave Wolverton, has published 50 novels. He is most widely known for his best-selling Rune Lords fantasy series. 
And this year, we are very honored to welcome three impressive new judges for Illustrators of the Future. Dave Dorman is an Eisner Award-winning illustrator, well known for his book, comic, trading card, and game paintings, including work for Star Wars, Batman, Indiana Jones, Aliens, and Universal Monsters. Former Illustrators of the Future winner Robert Castillo has been a director, animator, illustrator, and storyboard artist. His work has appeared in feature films, music videos, television shows, and commercials. Former Illustrators of the Future winner from 1992, Sean Tan, has written and illustrated 11 books and has worked as a concept artist for the films Horton Hears a Who and Wally. -E. Sean has won or been nominated for the Hugo Award three times, won the World Fantasy Award three times, and recently won the Academy Award for his short animated film, The Lost Thing. Sean can't be with us tonight, but he sent the following words, and he writes. I remember with great fondness the first time I submitted to the contest as a teenager, knowing very little about anything except that I loved drawing and I loved science fiction, and that there were people out there happy to cast a serious and critical eye over my meager offerings. That knowledge alone was enough, and even the rejections included a small handwritten note of encouragement from Frank Kelly Fries, absolutely amazing. When I won, it was an enormous thrill, and the subsequent trip to the US was a remarkable experience. It was the first time I ever met other people for whom science fiction writing and illustration was a full-time job. Who would have guessed such a crazy thing was possible? It's a pleasure to come full circle as a judge 20 years later and to have a hand in encouraging a new generation of aspiring artists. Best wishes to all of you. Have a terrific time and enjoy this appreciation of your passion. To the esteemed judges, thank you for contributing your time and talent to discovering the next generation of visionary storytellers and illustrators. You are the true treasure of these contests. Will all judges in the audience tonight please stand up and be warmly acknowledged. In 2009, we celebrated 25 years of the Writers of the Future contest. This year, we celebrate another very special anniversary, the centennial of the contest founder and benefactor, L. Ron Hubbard. Let us give you but a glimpse of the legacy that he left behind, in particular to aspiring artists. 100 years ago, on March 13, 1911, Ron was born in Tilden, Nebraska. In the first 24 years of his life, he traversed thousands of miles to China, India, the South Pacific, and the Caribbean, riding shotgun with a British secret agent in Peking, skirting typhoons off Borneo, and hacking through Caribbean jungles, living an exotic life filled with experiences that would later form the raw material for so much of his writing. By 1933, in the darkest days of the Great Depression, fewer than 200 American authors eked out a respectable living. L. Ron Hubbard was aptly qualified to give America what America then most needed, adventure. Although of the armchair variety, although lasting no more than 30 or 40 pulp magazine pages, but unadulterated and no holds barred adventure nonetheless. His first tales were drawn from his own personal exploits. Then came the adventure every writer faces, breaking into a keenly competitive market. In this case, magazine pages filled with stories by the likes of Dashiell Hammett, Raymond Chandler, and even Tennessee Williams, all vying for a penny or two a word. But bringing to bear a wealth of hard-won experience and coupling it with a rare eye for drama and ear for dialogue, it wasn't long before the name L. Ron Hubbard was emblazoned across a dozen pulp covers. Moving to New York City, he quickly assumed his place in pulp fiction history. The stories thereafter are the real stuff of legend. How L. Ron Hubbard redesigned the keyboard of his typewriter to pound out copy at upwards of 90 words a minute, and that's original copy, and the bulk of it sold first draft, first submission. It was said he even rigged the carriage to accommodate paper on the roll because he was working too fast to insert one sheet at a time. 
And while such tales might be doubtful, this much is certain. He was regularly churning out between 70 and 100,000 words of saleable fiction every month, and in only three working days a week. He also wrote fiction across the whole pulp spectrum, mysteries, intrigue, adventure, thrillers, westerns, even occasional romance. If that is not enough, he was additionally scripting for Hollywood, first adapting his own Secret of Treasure Island to the screen, then reworking scene and dialogue on Wild Bill Hickok, The Spider Returns, and The Mystery, Mysterious Pilot. Then just for good measure, he was doctoring scripts for none other than Clark Gable and feeding story ideas to Howard Hughes. Yet, what's most relevant to this evening is his tales for astounding science fiction, that immortal vehicle and springboard to science fiction's golden age. He originally entered the field in 1939, enlisted by publisher Street and Smith to transform the genre with real characterization, which would broaden, which, which would, would broaden Astounding's fan base. Through the process, he also broadened the writer base, and thus, in addition to his own visionary tales of distant worlds, we also have the works of Ray Bradbury, Isaac Asimov, and Frank Herbert to cite but a few who followed in his wake. But there is something else that followed in the wake of L. Ron Hubbard's foray into speculative fiction. His much-awaited return to the field in 1982, when he released his monumental Battlefield Earth, which captivated a worldwide audience and dominated international bestseller lists. That's the work he dedicated to Robert A. Heinlein, A. E. Van Vogt, John W. Campbell, Jr., and all the others from the 30s and 40s who ushered in the golden age of science fiction and fantasy, and so made these genres the respected literary traditions they are today. L. Ron Hubbard wasn't just a writer. He had a lifelong tradition of helping other writers. Knowing how difficult it is for an unknown to break into the field, he wrote, and I quote, the competition is very keen and even dagger sharp. It is with this in mind that I initiated a means for new and budding writers to have a chance for their creative efforts to be seen and acknowledged. Thus, in 1985, he created the Writers of the Future contest. In that same spirit, and expressly for artists who would give the written word both visual form and shape the illustrators of the future contest was added. Originally, Originally judged by the likes of the late Will Eisner, Jack Kirby, Ed Cartier, Frank Frasetta, and Frank Kelly Fries. And our contests are to this day discovering the new talent now shaping a new golden age. So with that, let us salute L. Ron Hubbard on the centennial of his birth, as well as those who made his dream a reality, and those writers and illustrators we celebrate tonight who will inspire generations to come. Tonight's keynote speaker, Dr. Simon Pete Warden, is a retired U.S. Air Force General and current director of the NASA Ames Research Center, which provides critical R&D support for the nation's aeronautics and space missions. His Green Space Initiative uses Ames remote sensing technology to implement air traffic safety, fight forest fires, and study climate change. A recognized expert on space issues, both civilian and military, Dr. Warden has authored or co-authored more than 150 technical papers in astrophysics, space science, and strategic studies. Please welcome Dr. Simon Pete Warden. I am truly honored to be here. You science fiction writers and illustrators all have inspired many of my colleagues at NASA and me to make your dreams real. I've heard countless tales from astronauts and NASA employees on how they studied math, science, and engineering in school after reading or watching science fiction. It opens our minds to possibilities. I must confess occasionally at some hazard, I'm reminded of several times in high school that I had to sit in detention after I got caught reading a sci-fi paperback hidden in my history textbook. <laughs> it didn't cut mustard with the teacher when I tried to explain that I was reading that history of the future. But that is what you do. <laughs> you. 
When I was in college, I loved the film 2001, A Space Odyssey, which of course was inspired by Arthur C. Clarke's 1950 short story, The Sentinel. The story influenced many to fall in love with the limitless possibilities of space exploration. The movie sparked imaginations and provided a realistic preview of what our future in space might look like. And I eventually got to meet Sir Arthur himself in Sri Lanka. He even had the zero gravity toilet instructions from the film in his guest restroom. <laughs> when 2001 A Space Odyssey premiered in 1968, living and working in space full time was of course science fiction. Today, crew members are aboard the International Space Station 365 days a year, operating one of the most complex engineering projects in history. The station is helping us push the boundaries of 21st century science, technology, and engineering. Although some of the things in the film are not yet realities, some of them are in the works. For example, although we haven't yet colonized the moon, NASA is planning to design rockets that will take us beyond low Earth orbit and into our solar system, and hopefully one day maintain a presence there. Other space ventures in space, such as hotels in orbit and routine space, uh, tourist space travel are being planned by commercial space flight companies. Your writings and illustrations tell us that the universe is much more complicated than we think. You tell us there could be multiple universes, that we can travel faster than the speed of light, and that the very fabric of space may contain limitless energy. For the last several dec decades, NASA has mounted missions to study the origin and structure of the universe. And to our surprise, the universe is much more complicated than we thought. We have uncovered evidence that the stuff of which we are made, normal matter, is a tiny percentage of what seems to be. We are indeed ghost matter. Each new mission tells us we know less about the physical universe than we thought. Of course, this is great news for job security for physicists. <laughs> I have little doubt that some of the other amazing concepts you write about may turn out to be true. Your writings inspire us to find out. Perhaps the most inspiring of all is the idea that we are not alone in the universe. Somewhere out there are other beings, other intelligences, and other civilization. These thoughts motivate our most exciting searches. How did life begin? And where else is it in the universe? And from these questions comes the ultimate one. What is the future of life in the universe? I believe that we will soon begin to get answers about the origin of life and where else it is in the universe, if anywhere. We have tantalizing evidence that life once existed and indeed may still exist on Mars. The key is water, or perhaps another liquid that exists on planetary surfaces. NASA probes are finding water everywhere, a point I will return to. Liquid water once flowed on Mars, and there is evidence that it could have flowed there within the last few millions of years. There is tantalizing evidence that there may still be life on Mars in the form of variable methane emissions. One possible source of methane is life. But before you start writing about Martian cows, <laughs> I should caution you that what may be there are microbes deep underground where liquid water may still exist and flow. However, in full disclosure, scientists at my center, NASA Ames, have written recent articles questioning the methane observations in their reality. Stay tuned as we discover more and more on this interesting possibility. But we are finding water at, in lots of places in our solar system. Abundance of water was found on our moon by recent NASA missions, such as the Lunar Crater Observation and Sensing Satellite, or LCROSS, which was managed by my center. There appears to be a huge liquid ocean under the kilometers of ice on the Jovian moon Europa. In Saturn's moons Enceladus has water jets indicating liquid water under the surface. Other liquids may also host life. Saturn's big moon Titan has ethane and methane rain and lakes. Some say bizarre life, possibly microbes could exist there. One of my Ames colleagues, Dr. Chris McKay, has recently written a paper pointing out that chemical equilibrium or non-equilibrium measurements from Titan could be explained by weird life. Indeed, hold that thought that chemical non-equilibrium means life. What this means is that a self-perpetuating process, presumably life, is operating to maintain a chemical imbalance that absent life would quickly disappear. In the Earth's atmosphere, large quantities of free oxygen is just such an indication. As you all know, the search for life becomes really interesting if we can find higher level life, 
maybe even intelligence. This is unlikely other than on Earth in this solar system, so we are searching for other solar systems. Two years ago, we launched Kepler, the first mission capable of finding Earth-sized planets in Earth-like orbits around Sun-like stars. And find them we are. Let me play a short video with some of Kepler's results. Three, two, engine start, one, zero, and liftoff of the Delta II rocket with Kepler on a search for planets in some way like our own. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> In the coming decades, NASA is planning missions that will actually determine whether planets such as Kepler is finding have water and oxygen, a discovery that we believe will be our first indication of extensive life in the universe. Most exciting of all, though, is human expansion into the universe. We are at the most exciting time in history because sometime in the next few decades, Earth life, us, will leave this planet permanently. This only happens once in history. You have written about it, and it's our task to make this real. To be sure, this is controversial, but it is our mission. We are deep in discussion with Congress, the administration, partners around the world, and most significantly with the private sector on how to do this. Will it be done by governments, ours alone or with many others? Will the private sector do it without us? Can we help, and so forth. Some of us inspired by you are thinking further. In the past year, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, has worked with us to figure out how we might begin to build a starship to take us to those places Kepler is finding. We are figuring out how a private foundation could be set up to work over many years to do the necessary technical, social, political, and financial groundwork for this great endeavor. This is called the 100-Year Starship Project. We are planning a major conference later this year, and I hope you will all attend. Let me close by telling you that I believe that the first human off-world settlement will happen within 20 years. It may be at the poles of the moon, it may be on Mars, or even an asteroid, but it will happen. Now I'd like to show you one small step we took a year and a half ago to find places where there's water to support such a settlement. I said at the beginning that science fiction writing and illustrating has helped inspire NASA. I also like to think that what we do at NASA has helped inspire you, that our new discoveries provide the tools to open your imagination. Or, as in the words of the contest creator, L. Ron Hubbard, science fiction is the dream that precedes the dawn when the inventor or scientist awakens and goes to his books or his lab saying, I wonder 
whether I could make that dream come true in the world of real science. Thank you. Thank you. To bestow a special presentation, please welcome Keir Graff, Senior Editor of Booklist, a publication of the American Library Association. At Booklist Magazine, where I work, we've been reviewing science fiction and fantasy for over 50 years. Now, that sounds impressive, I know, but given that the magazine is over 100 years old, you might say we've only been doing it half time. L. Ron Hubbard's Writers of the Future Awards give writers and illustrators vital encouragement at a crucial point during their developing careers. And at Booklist, as we try to connect deserving books with their best audiences, I often feel we're doing something similar. In 1992, Sean Tan won for illustration. In recent years, he's become a Booklist favorite. Reviewer Jesse Karp called the stories in Tan's newest book, Lost and Found, the visionary work of a master storyteller, illustrator, and designer who cares deeply about his message. Tan's work has been honored by the American Library Association, too, just a little something he can add to his Oscar win. In 2003, Jay Lake won for his short story, Into the Gardens of Sweet Night. And in 2005, Bookless raved about his debut novel, Rocket Science. Our reviewer, Ray Olson, called it a real tour de force by a top flight talent. There is a key difference, however, between the mission of writers of the future and what we do at Booklist. Tonight, we celebrate writers and illustrators whose voices and visions have achieved excellence. At Booklist, we review 8,000 titles a year, and let me tell you, they aren't all excellent. <laughs> but that's why it's such a pleasure to be here. <laughs> there are only good reviews tonight. Tonight, we toast the voice and vision of promising writers and illustrators and anticipate their future successes. We at Booklist, like our peers in the publishing industry, can't help but be impressed by the track record of this venerable award contest, at the number of noteworthy authors and illustrators who have gotten their start with the award and with the tutelage they receive in the workshop. I guess you could say that by making writers better, you're making our jobs easier. Therefore, we would like to present this award with an award, Bookless Magazine's first ever publishing industry award. I'll just read it. Uh, the Booklist Magazine Publishing Industry Award presented to L. Ron Hubbard's Writers and Illustrators of the Future Awards in recognition of 27 years of discovering and supporting emerging writers and artists in science fiction and fantasy. We wish you continued success. And finally, it is my pleasure to announce two more awards. From the mayor of the city of Los Angeles, Antonio R. Villaraigosa, we receive certificates of congratulations to both the illustrators and writers of the future contest with best wishes for a memorable event and successful future. And our anniversary coffee table book, L. Ron Hubbard Presents Writers of the Future, The First 25 Years, edited by our very own Kevin J. Anderson, just took first place in its category for the prestigious 2011 International Book Award. <laughs> now, on with the awards. Each quarter, the contest judges select the top three entries from among all the submissions received the best stories, the best illustrations. The writer uses words to tell a story, and the illustrator uses visual media. 
Each has a different toolkit, but together the writer and artist bring an imaginative universe into being. For each of the following winners, an author's story has been paired with a particular illustrator style, a collaboration of words and images to be published together in the annual Writers of the Future anthology. Now, as we present the Individual Achievement Awards to the quarterly writer and illustrator winners, we'll take you on a tour of the Writers of the Future, Volume 27, including all 12 prize-winning stories and a very special finalist selected by the coordinating judge, along with the accompanying illustrations by our prize-winning artists. For the first presentation, please welcome Writers of the Future Judge Nina Kiriki Hoffman and Illustrators of the Future Judge Cliff Nelson. Jeff Lyman, the author of the first story in the anthology, grew up in the frozen wasteland of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. He graduated from Princeton with a degree in aerospace engineering, and 10 years later decided to take writing seriously. He lives and works near New York City as a mechanical engineer. His poignant story for writers of the future about isolated solar sailors cruising the fringes of the solar system, the unreachable voices of ghosts, is his first professional sail. Please congratulate Jeff Lyman. First of all, I would like to thank all of you, the audience, for coming out. You don't know us yet. You haven't read our stories yet. And so it's an honor that you came out to support us tonight. Um, and it, and it, says, it speaks to the, uh, the contest and the dedication and hard work of the judges that you came out. And with that, I'd like to thank the judges for all their hard work and author services and Galaxy Press for all you've done for us this week. And of course, thank Mr. Hubbard for making this possible. Uh, there are three very important women I need to thank which is why I'm up here, my, my beautiful wife, Angel, who is not a writer and probably didn't know what she was getting into when she married me. <laughs> Thank you, Angel. Um, Miss Jean Cavellos, who is the director and teacher of the uh, Odyssey Writing Workshop, uh, who's an amazing and compassionate teacher. She guided me and challenged me while I was at Odyssey. Thank you, Jean. And my close friend, Danielle Ackley McPhail, who roped me into helping her edit a uh, small press anthology a few years ago. We've since done a few more, and she's taught me so much about the business. Thank you, Danielle. There are many people who go into building and creating a writer, could be a friend or a teacher or a judge in a contest who saw something in a story. And it amazes me how many of you do it out of the kindness of your heart. So I hope that I can uh, pay back this award someday by nurturing the next generation of writers. Thank you very much. At the age of 10 in sunny Los Angeles, Nico Fotos spent seven hours a day, seven days a week drawing. His parents decided the best way to handle his mania was to channel it, so they enrolled him in art classes and gave him how-to books. Nico's mentor introduced him to the incredible work of Frank Frazetta, whose influence is apparent in Nico's realistic and epic painting, Style for the Unreachable Voices of Ghosts. Please congratulate Nico Fotos. It has been such an honor and such a privilege to be here. This is an amazing contest, amazing judges, amazing people run this, and I have had the time of my life. Um, I couldn't have gotten here without the help of many people, so I would like to say some thank yous. First of all, thank you to my lovely girlfriend, Mariah Harrison. She supported me all the way through this, through nine submissions. I've submitted to the contest nine times. <laughs> thank you to my parents. Without your support, I wouldn't have gotten here. Thank you to Author Services and Galaxy Press and all the judges and all the people who ran my workshop. 
Cliff and Steve and Val and Ron, thank you guys very, very much. I've had a blast the whole time and I've learned so much. This has been an incredible adventure and I would like to thank Ellen Hubbard for providing this opportunity. Thank you very much. Please welcome Writers of the Future Judge, Dave Woolerton, and Illustrators of the Future Judge, Vincent DeFate. In our next story, Maddie Dune's first and only spelling bee, a half-human spellcaster, must compete against other witches to win a magical tournament and dancing brooms are just one of the competitions. The author of the story, Patrick O'Sullivan, is a software and technology entrepreneur from St. Louis. He is always on the move, either in real life or in his imagination. Though Patrick has written more than a room full of technical documentation over the years, this story is his first professionally published work of fiction. Please congratulate Patrick O'Sullivan. It's real. <laughs> and I have to add that I want to thank the Cirque du Soleil people that just acted out part of my story. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. This whole thing has been uh, un, un, unbelievable. Um, uh, I, I want to thank... <laughs> Uh, no. I, I want to thank L. Ron Hubbard. I want to thank the folks at Author Services and, and Galaxy Press. And I want to particularly thank uh, Joni Lavaki. I'm a pretty introverted person, and I was terrified. I, well, I guess I'm still terrified to, <laughs> to, to be up here. Uh, but she was so incredibly gracious and incredibly nice and turned this from something I was utterly dreading into one of if not the finest moment of my life. <laughs> um, it, it's, a, it's a great honor to win this trophy, um, but it was equally an honor to win the honorable mention uh, the first time anyone ever said anything good about anything that, that I had written in, 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 in fiction. And it was at a time when I was, uh, I needed that. I needed it desperately. I think writers are, are like that. We, we need that. And, and writers of the future did that for me. It kept me working, it kept me writing, it kept me positive, and it, and it got me here today. And I got to meet all of these awesome judges, people whose work has inspired me. Um, it's, 
illuminated my mind. It's changed the, you, you all have changed the way I think. Um, and I hope someday I'll be able to pay back all of what you've done for me. So I'm sorry I ran so long. <laughs> Thanks again. Although Megan Muriel pursued a degree in creative writing, she returns to her artistic roots when her husband came home from a tour in Iraq and announced that they should co-write a children's fantasy adventure. Their imaginary world turned out so fantastical that she adopted a new medium, multimedia collage targeting a colorful synergy of fantasy and reality. Uh, exactly appropriate to illustrate Maddie Dune's first and only spelling bee. She previously placed finalist twice in a row um, in the Illustrators of the Future Contest. Please congratulate Megan Muriel. before I found out that I had placed finalist for the third time in the Illustrators of the Future contest. I opened up this fortune cookie and it says, you'll be very successful in an entertainment career. <laughs> uh, true, true story. And then about a week before I found out that that finalist had gone on to win the Illustrators of the Future contest, I opened up another fortune cookie and it said, you will be very successful in an entertainment career. <laughs> I guess it's written in the cookies. <laughs> I first would like to thank God for blessing me with the talent. And then I would really like to thank not only L. Ron Hubbard for starting this amazing contest, but the judges whose skill sets just are supernatural. And they have provided me the opportunity to be here with other illustrators who were all in the same boat. And it's not about who you know, it's not about big names. Let me tell you, this is like the only contest on the planet that genuinely enables you to rise based on merit alone. And <laughs> and I have to say, in a market that is so oversaturated right now, both in the illustrators and the writer's side, it's like you have something to say and you're standing in a crowded room, screaming at the top of your voice, I have something, see me, I'm here, and no one can hear you. This contest, it gives you a megaphone. <laughs> <laughs> I would really like to thank my friend Irina, whose editorial skills, both in art and illustration, have helped me to improve my skill set. And let me tell you, I will not send anything up to publication without passing stuff through her spam filter. But, um, <laughs> I'd also like to thank my parents who have flown from upstate New York to Texas to watch my babies. Uh, they've made it possible for me to physically be here because I have a four-year-old and I just had a brand new two-month-old little baby girl and <laughs> I can still see poor Mereva looking at my email going, I just sent her uh, my final illustration for the anthology and I had just gone into labor. And I'm <laughs> I'm hanging off the fireplace in contraction. I just want to hit that send button. <laughs> but the best part about that, the best part is I get home, I have a brand new baby, and I get the email saying, well, wasn't that under the wire? <laughs> but I had to save the best for last. I would really like to thank my husband, who has supported me in every way a person can be supported. And I'm really blessed because he's in the military and he could be deployed right now, but he's able to be here. And we've had such adventures together and I've been able to be his cheerleader as he's gone on to achieve his profession, rising from E7 enlisted to officer from 15 years in the Marine Corps to captain in the, in the Army. And for the, first, for the first time ever, he can be here as my cheerleader as I go on to achieve something professional. <laughs> Please 
please welcome Writers of the Future Judge Mike Resnick and Illustrators of the Future Judge Robert Castillo. Brennan Harvey started reading science fiction regularly when he took a uh, book by Robert A. Heinlein home from school. The book was Friday. Years later, it was my story, Kirin Yaga, that ignited his interest and desire in writing. And you can imagine how pleased and proud I am to give out this particular award. Brennan's first story was a finalist in Writers of the Future contest. Seven years later, his story, The Truth from a Lie of Convenience, took first place, a tale of conspiracy and rebellion on the moon. Living in Huntington Beach, California, he has written two novels and is currently working on his third. Please congratulate Brennan Harvey. I want to thank L. Ron Hubbard for, for creating this amazing contest. I want to thank Author Services and Galaxy Press for keeping it alive um, all these years, for honoring his wishes. Joni Lavaki, the contest administrator, for everything that she does, and Katie Wentworth, the coordinating judge, who reads all of our stories, no matter how good they are or how bad they are. Um, Robert Heinlein, uh, Mike Resnick, that's Mike Resnick. <laughs> Uh, wow. I, um, Eric James Stone. He's the first guy who's like, he's a real live guy who's one of the writers of the future. Uh, thank you for that inspiration. Uh, um, organizations, uh, Uncle Orson's writing course, the La Jolla Writers um, Conference, uh, GLAS, the Greater Los Angeles Writer Society, Southern California Writers Association. Without that education, I wouldn't be here. Um, my critique group, um, online science fiction novelist, or SF novelist. Um, my group that I run, the Southern California, or the Long Beach Writers Meetup Group. Um, the people who made this story a winner, Neil Young. Um, oh God. <laughs> Rose Molina, Susan Solomon, Bonnie Williams. Uh, they made this story a winner. Um, the story is now complete. Erwin Rodriguez did an amazing illustration, and you're going to see it. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, just this week, um, Tim Powers and Katie Wentworth, uh, they filled my head up to here. I don't even know what I've learned yet. Uh, all, all of... All of the judges and the speakers who talked to us, who inspired me, who confused me, and, and one of which left me speechless. Uh, uh, Jordan Lapp, our um, big brother blogger, thank you for coming out and like babysitting us and showing us the ropes. I really appreciate it. Um, and Author Services, the nicest people you will ever want to meet um, for hosting us. And lastly, my sweetie. Um, I've, I've won the Writers of the Future contest, and yay. I've won her heart. That's even more important. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Deva, squeak squeaker, squeak squeaking. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, in my life as an illustrator and storyboard artist, I met many great artists who have had tremendous success. 
the most successful ones have shared this secret with me, and that secret is giving back. The more you give, the more you will receive. Illustrators of the future is successful because they give us artists a chance. They took a chance on me, and they passed on their wisdom to me. I'm very glad to have had a chance to do the same as a new illustrator of the future judge. Thank you. And now for the, for the most important news here. And now on to the next illustrator winner. He was, uh, when he was young and living in the Bronx in New York, that's where I'm from. I was born there too. Irvin Rodriguez learned the value of hard work and creativity from his father. In high school, a friend taught him how to airbrush and gave him his first paid job as an artist. Most of Irvin's, Irvin's days and nights are spent drawing, which leaves little time for sleeping and eating. <laughs> he illustrated two stories in this year's anthology, The Truth from a Life of Convenience and John Arkwright's story, The Sundial. Please congratulate with me, Irvin Rodriguez. Good evening. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Hell Ron Hubbard for making this possible. We would not be here without him. I'd also like to thank everyone at Author Services and Galaxy Press. They've been wonderful this week. I've had the time of my life. I've learned more than you can imagine. I'd also like to acknowledge the judges, the esteemed panel of judges. They were wonderful, most talented illustrators, some of the best I've ever met. I've learned so much this week. I'm so ready to go back home and <laughs> just work twice as hard as I've ever done. I'd also like to thank my family for the love and support who have given me, you know, just kept pushing me along the way since I was a child to keep working and, you know, kept plowing forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please welcome Writers of the Future Judge, Dr. Jerry Burnell and Josh Robert Thompson. You know, there's a lot said about thanking writers and artists for their inspiration to the world. I thought it might be appropriate to add that we get inspired too. Thank you, General Warden. Thank God the dream is not dead. <laughs> Richard Johnson was born in Botswana, but grew up in England and now works as a structural engineer in Melbourne, Australia. That's quite an odyssey. Richard wants to rekindle that spirit of optimism and faith in technology from the 1950s. He wants Facebook to have a status update for home planet. <laughs> Is that too much to ask? His first place story in Apprehension, How Like a God is a mind-bending murder mystery in a world where a godlike computer can reprogram reality itself. Please congratulate Richard Johnson. Wow. Uh, um, first of all, I'd like to thank Megan, Patrick, and Brennan for raising the uh, emotional bar on these speeches. Um, I, just, I just got a few thank yous to say, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, 
I'd just like to add a few words of thanks to those already expressed this evening to, uh, to the estate of L. Ron Hubbard, uh, to John Goodwin and all the guys at Galaxy Press, uh, to Joni Lubacki and everyone at Author Services. Without their hard work and dedication, we, this just wouldn't happen. Thanks also to Tim Powers and Katie Wentworth and all the judges and past winners that have spoken to us this week and uh, um, made this week such, a, such an amazing experience. Um, I know you guys do this every year, but somehow you managed to make it a, a fresh and exhilarating experience for us all. And thank you for that. Um, my story was graced by a fantastic illustration by Dustin Panzino. Um, thank you so much for that, Dustin. And on a personal note, I'd like to thank my parents uh, for cultivating in me a love of reading, uh, but never telling me what I could or couldn't read. Uh, thanks also to Geordie McLeod for his invaluable uh, insight into my early drafts. Um, and finally, writing can be quite a solitary pursuit, but in my case, it would not be possible without the love and support of my wonderful wife. So, Lynn, this is for you. Dustin Panzino was born in Syracuse, New York, and went to high school in Ocala, Florida, where he was accepted to the Marion County Center for the Arts. Intrigued by the beauty and history of New England, he decided to study at the New Hampshire Institute of Art, where he has a double major in illustration and fine art photography. His illustration for In Apprehension, How Like a God, pulls at the heartstrings as well as the imagination. Please congratulate Dustin Panzino. I just want to thank everybody at Author Services and Galaxy Press and also all the judges who spent their time coming out and teaching us everything that they know. And it, that was just wonderful. I've learned so much here. I also can't wait to go home and paint and <laughs> use everything that I've learned. So, carpe diem. <laughs> Please welcome Writers of the Future Judge, Dr. Doug Beeson, and Illustrators of the Future Judge, Stephen J. Hickman.
In the anthology's next story, An Acolyte of Black Spires, a scholar from the dying race takes a masked acolyte who holds secrets greater than the histories they study. For the author of the story, Ryan Harvey, his passion began with dinosaurs at a young age, and then came Ray Harryhausen movies, Greek and Norse mythology, and pulp literature. He had no choice but to become a writer. Born in Washington, D.C. with a college stint in Minnesota for his history degree, Ryan has lived most of his life in Los Angeles. Ryan has worked as a high-speed um, speed reading instructor, a copy editor, a story editor for director Roland Yaffe, and regrettably, a commodities broker. It was, his, <laughs> it was his first entry in the Writers of the Future and his first professional sale. He just completed a novel set in the same science faction, uh, fa fantasy world. Please congratulate Ryan Harvey. Cats are wonderful things. If I seem a little teary-eyed right now, it's because I just saw two dancers illustrate the relationship between Hallett and Quarrel in my story, and I broke down. Um, I've lived with these characters for almost three years now into short stories and novels, and that was amazing. <laughs> One of the great nuggets of advice we've received during this amazing week is to pay it forward. I shall start right now. When I first wrote An Acolyte of Black Spires, I did not think anyone would ever want to read it, let alone publish it. So to all aspiring writers out there, if you think you cannot make it, you are wrong. Never give up, never surrender. Thank you to Author Services and Galaxy Press for continuing the legacy of L. Ron Hubbard that he created for new writers. Uh, because I'm a local boy, seriously, a uh, uh, left and a right and four miles and you're there, um, I've gotten to know many of the people from uh, Author Services and Galaxy Press over the last year. Um, they are wonderful people and especially Joni Labaki. I'm not sure how she does it every year, all this work, and she loves every minute of it. <sighs> Uh, thank you, Jordan Lapp. For some of us who are very shy, Jordan Lapp has helped introduce us to some of these wonderful judges. To all the judges for, for picking my story, uh, Katie Wentworth and Tim Powers, you are not only amazing writers, you are wonderful human beings. Um, to uh, Fred Jordan, whose illustration you're about to see, when I saw Hallett and Quarrel and realized that in one image, Fred had captured their relationship in a way that I could not even imagine. I also started to almost cry at that point, too. Um, to uh, um, the people of Blackgate Magazine, who cannot be here but are watching right now, um, John O'Neill, the Blackgate editor, who bought my first Antarctica stories, to Bill Ward, who did the corrections on this story, and most of all, to Howard Andrew Jones, a great writer who I'm proud to call my friend. Uh, he was the one who inspired me the most, and this award is partially his. Uh, I would be remiss not to mention the two authors who are long gone who inspired me to write this story, Clark Ashton Smith and Cornell Woolrich. Cornell, I'm sorry your life was so depressing, but you have inspired me more than almost anyone else. Finally, to my wonderful family, who stood by the eccentric older child for 38 years. <laughs> to my brother, Dr. Reed Harvey, my sister, Colleen Martin, and my nephew, Diego, and most of all, to my mom and dad, who braved Sunset Boulevard to be here tonight. No son could have parents more supportive than my parents. Thank you so much for all those dinosaur books when I was a kid. It paid off.
Fred Jordan was raised in Three Rivers, California, a small community at the gates of Sequoia National Park. After high school, he earned a BFA at American Continental University, majoring in digital design, then received an MFA at the Academy of Art, University of San Francisco. Currently, Fred resides in Long Beach and works out of his studio while continuing to grow each day as an artist. His epic mythological style captures the science fantasy mood of an acolyte of black spires. Please congratulate Fred Jordan. First off, thank you, Ryan, for uh, those kind words and a great story. I want to thank everybody at uh, Author Services and uh, Galaxy Press, all the judges. You guys have been outstanding, just incredible all week long. This has been an ex I mean, <laughs> extreme experiment, but I mean, wonderful. And uh, my family, of course, for always supporting me and loving me. I wouldn't be here without you guys. And uh, <laughs> this is just great. Thank you, everybody. Please welcome Writers of the Future Judge, Larry Niven, and Illustrators of the Future Judge, Ron Lindon. Good evening. This is a hell of a show and a great way to start a career, and I wish it had existed when I was starting. Uh, Vaughn, Aaron Hughes lives in Denver, Colorado with his wife and three children. Aaron read science fiction and fantasy during law school so that he could retain the ability to speak in a language other than, than legalese. <laughs> he has practiced law for 20 years and he's already had success in writing as he wrote two cases in the US Supreme Court. In his story of intolerance and genocide, the dualist Nice pun. A human envoy finds himself caught in a bloody religious war between two alien cultures, neither of which he can understand. It was his first submission to the Writers of the Future contest. Please congratulate Van Aaron Hughes. has applause on the teleprompter, so theoretic. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I want to thank some of the people who made it possible for me to be here tonight. Beginning with my family, my wife Beth, my oldest son Griffin, who is a more talented writer than I am, uh, my daughter Kira, my princess and now my fellow avid reader, and my youngest son Noah. The force is strong in that one. <laughs> um, also my parents, my sisters, my in-laws, the Stapps, the Trenholms, and all my other friends and family who have been so supportive of my writing. I want to thank the members of the Denver Science Fiction and Fantasy Book Club, the Northern Colorado Writers Workshop, and all the good folks at the Denver office of Dorsey and Whitney. Also, Jason Johnson and Paolo Bacigalupi for their thoughts and encouragement when I was writing my winning story. Uh, I also want to express gratitude to the memory of L. Ron Hubbard for creating this contest to Joni Labaki and everyone at Author Services and Galaxy Press who do such a fabulous job with this contest and with this anthology. I want to thank Tim Powers, Katie Wentworth, and all the judges and guest lecturers who have made this week such an amazing experience. And for the same reason, I want to thank all of my fellow winners. Um, after what you've been seeing tonight, I think this is probably stating the obvious, but in addition to being extremely talented, they are also just a really nice group of people, and I will take a lot of pleasure in seeing their future successes. I want to thank, in particular, out of that group, Ryan Harvey, that's the guy with the hat, for, for putting up with my snoring all week. <laughs> um, 
And Freddie Edwards, who illustrated my story, he took this weird, I vaguely formed idea in my head and, and made it real. And I'm going to take his illustration and put it up on my wall, and I will never, ever take it down. Uh, most of all, I want to thank all of you, everyone who's here tonight, everyone watching on the internet, everyone who got dressed up and came down and is acting like this is a big deal. Be because to me, and I think to my fellow winners, it is a big deal. Uh, I've been a reader my whole life, and when other kids were idolizing the quarterback on the football team, that's how I idolized er Isaac Asimov and Ursula Le Guin. And I always had a difficult time wrapping my mind around the idea that the, the stories and the characters that were so significant to me, that there were people who seemed like ordinary men and women who created those. And even to this day, it's, it's, there's a part of me that finds it difficult to believe that there is no such place as Arrakis or Omelas or Ringworld, that, that there is no such person as Charlie Gordon or Tyrion Lannister or Christian Haraldson. Maybe some of you remember Christian Haraldson. He was a very talented musician. He was ordered not to create music, but he did. He went into a bar and he went up to the rickety out of tune piano in the corner and he started to play. And it was amazing. But then they came in and they made him stop and, and they cut off his fingers so he could never do it again. And I was there. I, I saw it happen. Except that it didn't happen. What actually happened is there's this guy and he has a fancy sounding name but his friends call him Scott and Scott sat down at a keyboard and he made that up. He just made it up. And that's incredible to me. And I never believed that I could do that, that I could just make up stories that would be meaningful to other people. And, and I'm not sure still that I believe that, but, but I have this thing, this, this physical object, and it's solid. And it says right on it, it says, writers of the future. So for the rest of my life, even if I never finish another story, let alone have it published and read by other people, I'll have this tangible evidence that for one day, I was a writer too. And I, I don't think I can really convey to all of you how much that means to me. All I can say is thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be part of the most uh, panel of the most august judges, illustrator judges on the planet. There's nothing like this anywhere. So we should all be proud of L. Ron Hubbard, Author Services, and all the folks that give so much time to keep this happening. It's been 20 something years. Now, one of our illustrators, Frederick Edwards from Tucson, Arizona, resisted becoming an artist for a long time but his path was clear. He eventually received a BFA in illustration from the University of Arizona, and by that time, he was a combat veteran, had two children, and was working with the developmentally disabled. Now he lives in Virginia with his two children, where he's pursuing his master's in education. His vivid, surrealistic style was a natural fit for the dualist. Please congratulate Frederick Edwards. Forgive me, I'm, my heart's beating like a thousand times a minute, but uh, yeah, for a while now, I haven't been quite motivated to do anything. Um, but after this week of workshops and being around these amazing illustrated, illustrators, I'm sorry, um, I feel revitalized, and ready to create. And uh, special thanks to the, the facilitators, the um, Cliff Nielsen, um, Stephen Hickman, um, Ron and Val Linden. Um, your message transcends art, and that really meant a lot to me, and I thank you. And of course, to L. Ron Hubbard and Galaxy Press, 
authors, authors services, and everyone associated with the contest. And uh, my family, uh, thank you, Dad, Liz, and my daughter, Kitty, and to those at home, Bella, Sean, Jacob, Kayla, and my son, Geitzka. And thank you. Please welcome Writers of the Future Judge Tim Powers and Illustrators of the Future Judge Val Lakey Lindon. Kefi R. M. Curry, Curly, I'm sorry. Kefi R. M. Curly lived most of his life in Western Washington, except for the nine months he spent in Finland, failing quantum mechanics and swimming in frozen lakes. Akefi has earned degrees in physics and linguistics and currently works in a molecular bi biology research lab. He also harbors delusions of becoming a rock star, but judging from the quality of his winning story, Bone House, where a hunter hunts down addicts who have lost their souls inside a computer network, he's more likely to become a renowned author. Please congr congratulate Kefi Curley. I would first like to thank L. Ron Hubbard for starting this and paying it forward in such a big way, as well as all the people with Author Services and Galaxy Press for putting on an amazing event. I would like to thank um, Tim Powers and Katie Wentworth for the amazing workshop that we've done all week. Um, they've put so much work into this that it's unbelievable. Um, I would also like to thank my parents. Um, they brought me to ET when I was 18 months old and I imprinted almost immediately. Um, apparently they didn't know that I could really talk that much and they put me in the car, figured I had no idea what had happened, got five miles down the road and I started sobbing uncontrollably and they couldn't figure out why I was crying. I mean, they figured it was the normal 18 month old issues and then suddenly I sobbed, ET, ET, because ET had unfortunately gone home. Um, I also want to thank them for filling our house with books and most importantly for putting uh, The Lord of the Rings on the very top shelf, thus showing me that um, actually the books that grown-ups read are fantasy and science fiction. Um, I would also like to thank um, my writers group that I met in Bellingham who dragged me from my physics degree and told me to start writing. Um, you will see them hopefully here someday. Um, that would be Corey Scary and Elizabeth Coleman. Um, I would also like to thank my entire clarion class because they have been amazingly supportive um, ever since 2008 when we met. And I would like to thank you all for coming out today. Thank you. Good evening. At nine years old, Vivian Friedel made up her mind that she didn't want to be a ballerina or a veterinarian. When she grew up, she already knew she wanted to be an artist. She daydreams about doodling on overly expensive sketch pads or computer tablets, although somehow her favorite is to use a number five mechanical pencil on modest sheets of printer paper. Her unsettling, surrealistic, technique evokes the cyber landscape of Bone House. Please congratulate Vivian Friedel. feels so surreal. It's the start of a beautiful summer to me after a tough spring semester, so uh, I'm really appreciative of uh, the hardworking people at Author Services and Galaxy Press who've been able to 
seamlessly sew together all the individual aspects of this event. And I'm also very thankful for the advice and help I've received from all the coordinating judges and the visiting professionals. Uh, they took time out of their busy lives to help us misfits out, so I really appreciate that. And uh, I've also just had a great deal of fun uh, getting to know my fellow peers, the fellow illustrator winners, and also the writer winners. And they're all just a great, big old, glorious mess of fun and kooky people, so <laughs> thank you very much. I've only known them for barely a week, and already they feel like family to me. And this wouldn't be possible if L. Ron Hubbard didn't have this one vision to reach out to future storytellers. So big thanks to him, uh, big thanks to everyone, and thank you for my dad for making it out, and thanks to my mom uh, for raising me right. <laughs> she couldn't make it, but if she could, uh, she would have been, been here in a heartbeat. So thank you very much for this opportunity. It's been great. Please welcome Writers of the Future Judge Eric Flint and John Mariano. Patty Jansen lives in Sydney. She's our second Australian writer winner this year. In school, she started writing planetary romances, but her teachers insisted that science fiction was not proper literature. Compulsory reading list soured her on fiction for 20 years, and a full-time job as an agricultural scientist put a stop to her writing altogether. The death of her father finally jolted her into doing what she wanted to do. Her first pro sale to the universe annex of Eric Flint's Grantville Gazette magazine came two weeks before winning the Writers of the Future contest for her visceral story, This Peaceful State of War, in which missionaries on a hellish planet try to impose peace between alien races, even if it means destroying the world's life cycle. Please congratulate Patty Jansen. Well, thanks to um, Eric, of course, because um, he happens to be paired with me, but he um, also happened to publish my first story. And I really appreciate that. That is sometimes a um, new writer really, really needs a boost. And uh, he provided that at the right mo moment in time. I would also like to thank um, everyone at the contest, everyone at Author Services, especially Joni, who has really worked very, very hard to um, make this such an enjoyable week for all of us. Um, I would like to thank um, especially um, the people in my writing groups that I've been part of for the past um, eight years almost. And um, in uh, December 2004, I uh, made a perhaps a very strange decision. I didn't know anyone who wrote, so I decided I needed to be with other writers. Well, in Australia, that's that's a bit hard. So I joined this group called, called the uh, Online um, Writers Workshop for Fantasy, Science Fiction, and Horror. And one of the first people I met there is sitting over there in the audience, Stelios. Um, the other person also of the workshop, Marlene, has just come for me uh, from San Francisco. Well, I would thank you very much and everyone else in that particular workshop that I was a member of for four years before moving on. I would also like to thank uh, the people of Andromeda Space Flightways In Flight magazine, um, where I am a slush reader and editor, um, to teach me about the other side of the business of writing because submitting and being rejected and submitting and being rejected is just one part, but you don't really understand what happens um, to the other side of the process unless you're actually in it. And 
you find out that no, those authors, those um, editors don't really hate you at all. Um, because after a while, after you've had about um, 100 rejections, that's what you start to think. Um, last but not least, I would really like to thank my family and especially my husband because he's never ever stopped me writing. He has never ever, although he doesn't really read anything that remotely approaches fiction, he likes reading financial things which comes in very handy. But. <laughs> Everyone in my family, and especially him, thank you very much for um, putting up with this really weird hobby of mine that at the moment might look like it might uh, actually turn serious. Um, last but not least, I want to say a few words for aspiring writers, because as editor of um, the magazine, I sometimes get these people and they tell me, I meet them at cons, and they say, you rejected my story. And I don't know, we slush blind like the contest does. I don't know who they are. I don't know if I reject their story or someone else. No one hates you. But it does feel at times as if you, anything, any kind of success is impossible. And, and it isn't. It really isn't. And a lot of things are possible. Um, for example, time travel. On uh, Sunday, the uh, 8th of May, Ben, who is sitting there, and I took the plane from Sydney at uh, 10 a.m. Sunday morning. At um, 6 a.m. Sunday morning, the 8th of May, we arrived in Los Angeles, having lost four hours. Time travel is entirely possible, and so a career in writing is possible. Thank you very much. Oh, man. What a great bunch of people, huh? Oh, Scott Frederick Hargrave grew up in Puerto Rico, surrounded by ancient Spanish cathedrals, the Arecibo radio telescope, mountain rainforests, underground caverns, and soulful Latin African salsa rhythms. Oh, yes. Uh, no wonder he was inspired to become an artist. Scott's career endeavors include screenwriting, directing low-budget films, and creating his own graphic novel, for which his bold ink style is well-suited as is shown in his illustration for This Peaceful State of War. Please congratulate Scott Frederick Hargrave. Well, they told me if I was nervous, just breathe. And I wish I could breathe in a fraction of the talent and genius and creativity in this room tonight. And it's just amazing to be here. It's been an amazing week um, just seeing new horizons, you know, being, being shown things that I couldn't even believe, you know, people do art-wise and writing-wise. So it's amazing to be here. Um, first in, first in, a, in a room full of such creativity, I need to uh, thank the God of the universe of creation and creativity. Um, I think we're most, most human when we create, and that's what we're all here trying to do. I need to thank my family, my mom and dad, who gave, gave me a lifetime of encouragement and love, saying, go chase your dreams, and that's what I'm trying to do. Um, my brothers, Greg and Mike, uh, Eve and Robin, I love you all and your inspiration to me. Um, everyone that made this contest possible, beginning with L. Ron Hubbard, uh, the idea of a, a great man paying it forward, like so many have said, uh, giving so much to inspire future generations. That's, that's just amazing. 
So, you know, big thanks to L. Ron Hubbard, Joni Labaki, who I can't imagine how much energy and dedication she puts into this, but she keeps us all going. And it's just wonderful that, it's wonderful that everybody in this contest gives so much of themselves to people who they don't know, just in the name of creativity. Um, the artist workshops were just stunning. You know, they opened my eyes, and I guess that's what any artist needs is open your eyes and see, see the possibilities. And that's what they give, that's what they give us, Ron and Val, Lyndon, Stephen Hickman, Cliff Nielsen, Vincent de Fate. It's just seeing those slideshows is like looking into a portal in another universe. Just their creativity inspires us all. Um, I'd like to thank Patty Jensen, who wrote the amazing story that gave me a chance to do something, elevated my art, you know, just by the power of her story. I know every illustrator probably feels the same way about their writer. It's just he, he gave us a chance to shine. I'd like to thank all the other winners in the workshops, in the illustrators' workshop especially. You guys are inspirations too. I mean, when I see how good you are and to walk into a room full with your art on the easels and mine's up there too. And it's like, it's amazing to be considered among people as, as young and talented and going someplace as you guys are going to be. I know you, you are going to have huge futures and be huge illustrators and writers of the future. So it's, just, it's amazing to be here and thank you, thank you all. Please welcome Writers of the Future Judge, Dr. Greg Benford, and Illustrators of the Future Judge, Laura Brody and Fries. In our next story, Sailing the Sky Sea, survivors aboard a damaged, morphing sky city struggle to keep from plunging into the cloudy depths of a gas giant. The author, Geir Lenneskog was born in Norway, but moved to the US when he was a child. Almost five years ago, he stubbornly began submitting a story every quarter to the Writers of the Future contest, and also entered his artwork in the Illustrators of the Future contest, and won on his first entry. It took him 18 consecutive entries before he won the Writers' contest for his gritty science fiction survival story. Please congratulate Gear Lanasco.
shown those guys were going to be there, I'd make everything in an upside down space wreck. <laughs> um, now I have bookends. <laughs> it, it took a really long time, and uh, it taught me never to quit and always to do my best. I'd like to thank my wife, Karen, for putting up with me, as I do both art and illustration in most of my free time. And I do try to, at least once every day, crawl out of my hole and say hi to her. <laughs> I've learned a lot this week. It's been great. Um, based on the essays of L. Ron Hubbard and the all the inspiration from the teachers and authors and winners that have, that have come to speak to us, I've learned that I can do more than the narrow writing that I have been doing, and I think we've all learned that. We've learned how we can expand into other realms of speculative fiction and enjoy the writing work. Um, I'd really like to thank L. Ron Hubbard for conceiving of this contest, and Arthur Services and Galaxy Press for continuing to give us a really great experience. Thank you. Good evening. In first grade, Joey Jordan's teacher informed her mother, your daughter is going to be a great artist. Nurture and support her in this the best you can. Well, nevertheless, Joey has worked in horse stables, a cedar shake mill, and a film development warehouse, and spent eight years in the Army and the National Guard, where she was a tank turret repairer. It's truth. Her artwork spotlights a focal character in crisis, and her illustration for Sailing the Sky Sea encapsulates a planetary war into a personal snapshot. Please congratulate Joey Jordan. Um, got my magic speech paper. It turned you all into my fellow workshop classmates. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, this is just the start of this wonderful journey. Um, I'd like to thank my husband, Sean, in the crowd here, uh, who helped build a studio area for me to work so that uh, I could get away from the distractions of the, our beautiful, wonderful children, Ashlyn and Riley. <laughs> Um, our friends and family that couldn't be here with us today, but they're watching live, too. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to thank L. Ron Hubbard for the creation of this wonderful idea, this awesome dream to help authors and illustrators of fantasy and science fiction to make their way into the field and be professionals. I plan to come back when I can to the future events to share what I've done during this time and things that I've learned and when you yourselves are up here uh, to pay it forward to the next group of writers and illustrators. I'd like to thank those of Authors Services for all the hard work that they've put into this, all the information that we've gained from this and how they made everything run so smoothly and fun for us. Um, it's just awesome here. <laughs> Uh, and last but not least, the guest speakers and our instructors. I'd use the word awesome again, but somebody's going to turn it into a drinking game. <laughs> the instructors were all such great teachers. I've learned so much from them in this time that I've been here. From your years of experience, uh, experiences and your uh, tests and trials, uh, the things and techniques that may have taken me years to dabble with, I can now go home and actually apply. And I know if I have questions in the future, I can actually look them up and ask. Because in a way, they've actually always been my instructors. From the days that I used to collect their little art cards and the, the book covers that I would sit there and try to sketch. <laughs> 
uh, to the tips that they've taught me just recently in the workshops. Also, I'd like to thank my classmates. You guys are all awesome, too. <laughs> Um, yay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
and meet new people and, and um, take part in an event such as this. And finally, I'd like to thank Catherine and the kids for their love of stories and for their support for this storyteller, without whose support he wouldn't be standing here today. Thank you. Eric Jean Solom's interests range from fantastic environments to the old Rocky Mountain mining town of Ward, Colorado, where he grew up, to images of contemporary urban life. He is now studying for his BFA in illustration at the Academy of the Art University in San Francisco. Eric's love for illustration combined with his devotion to speculative fiction led him to end the contest. His bold and cinematic drawing style captures the scope of the story, Unfamiliar Territory. Please congratulate Eric Jean Solom. incredible honor. I never thought I'd ever end up in a place like this. Um, I would like to thank my parents, first of all, for always believing in me and never telling me I couldn't do art or anything like that. Um, second, I'd like to thank my beautiful girlfriend, Shelby, for always being there and finding this competition for me. Um, I would like to give a special thanks to a good friend of mine, Joko, and I would like to thank all of you here today. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Please welcome Writers of the Future judge, Dr. Yoji Kondo and Jim Meskimen. Good evening. Uh, before I do my uh, assigned duty, I'd like to say a few words. Dr. Pete Warden is such a modest person, he did not mention this, but uh, he was in charge of the Strategic Defense, in Defense Initiative Office before he left that office. And the uh, American ambassador was Secretary of State was talking to a Soviet Prime Minister, asking, why you gave up on the Cold War? And his answer was that when you American guys started this Star Wars program, that's SDIO, we knew we couldn't win, so they gave up. So thank you, General Warden, for winning the Cold War without going to the uh, hot war. <laughs> <laughs> Now I think I'm supposed to start my assigned duty. Adam Perrin has degrees in computer science and in biology, neither of which he now uses. He was a diplomat for the US Department of State and artillery officer in the US Army, and an emergency medical technician, all of which provided invaluable inspiration and experience for his winning story, Medic the story of an embittered field medic in a future war who has to save a thousand people before he's allowed to go home. Medic is the first entry into the right of the future and the first professional sale. Please congratulate Adam Perry. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, that wasn't supposed to be an impression. Uh, I've had the horrible feeling uh, the whole time I've been here that somebody would come up and tap me on the shoulder and tell me there's been a, uh, a terrible mistake and my name was switched with the actual winner. But now that I have this, even if it is a mistake, I'm not giving it back. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, everybody that's pretty much already been thanked, but I'd like to say it myself. Um, first of all, L. Ron Hubbard for putting together this wonderful competition. Um, Joni and everybody here at Author Services who 
just do a, a magnificent job uh, putting this entire uh, program together. It's, it's really amazing. Uh, Tim Powers and Katie Wentworth for a fantastic workshop. Um, it's my first writing workshop of any kind, and uh, I don't think uh, I need to go into it anymore because I don't think any can be as good as this one was. Um, all of the judges who give up their valuable time to come here and help us and support us when uh, they certainly don't have to. Um, uh, and on a personal note, my, my parents, my father in Texas, who's hopefully watching, and my mother in Ohio, who, if she can figure out her computer, is also watching. <laughs> Uh, and finally, uh, everybody else um, who makes this, uh, this ceremony and this contest possible, everybody from the technicians, the camera people, the sound people, everybody that, that played a part in this, uh, I, I thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to say that they're, they're, most of the writers in here will know what I say when you, you, your life is usually filled with a lot of, of disappointment. And you may come to a point in your life where uh, after toiling for years, usually in silence, uh, you'll lie awake at night and thinking to yourself that you know you have talent, but you just can't get a chance to show it. Uh, and then many more years go by, and you start to think that uh, maybe they're right, maybe I don't have any talent, and I'm wasting my time here. Uh, that's the point that I had reached um, literally a few days before I got the call from Joni. And I can say that in my case, she literally threw me a lifeline. And uh, if nothing else, you know that you've turned around one life tonight. Um, I take this as a, as a great responsibility to prove to everybody here, all the judges, and everybody who's put the faith in me to give me this award that um, I won't let you down. Thank you. In junior high, Gregory J. Gunther's children's books were published through his local library system's Be an Author contest three years in a row. He's been involved in freelance graphic and website design for over a dozen years and hopes to work as a science fiction illustrator and writer, although he would also like to launch a board game development company, finish some illustrated storybook ideas, and do a few top secret original projects on the side. It's no wonder his work, such as his illustration for Medic, displays a wide range of styles and media. He lives in Midland, Michigan, right about here, where he teaches in the graduate program for communications and digital media design. Please congratulate Gregory Gunther. Thank you so much. Can you see me over the podium? <laughs> um, I'd like to say uh, that I'm honored to be here. The amazing talent with all of our writers and illustrators is just amazing. And just to be considered one of them has been an amazing experience. Um, I'd like to thank L. Ron Hubbard for his forethought and vision in supporting future writers and illustrators and just really giving them a chance to showcase their talents and to experience the joys of actually being published in a book. Um, I'd like to thank Author Services and everyone at Galaxy Press for their warmth, attentiveness, and just overall friendliness in making this event amazing for us and really welcoming us and making us feel like we're actually um, artists and writers. <laughs> I'd like to thank the judges, um, our instructors, who with their generosity and experience and knowledge have really opened my eyes to what's possible for everyone. And um, I know that like many of you have said, I'm looking forward to going back home and applying what I've learned and just really uh, hitting the computer and get to work. I'd like to thank my fellow winners, writers and illustrators, especially Adam for a great story, it really inspired me to create a great illustration. I'd like to thank my parents who instilled in me the joy of believing in yourself and to go for it um, and to follow your dreams. I'd like to thank my beautiful wife, Connie, who always 
support me with her love and patience while I'm working on all these projects. Um, and I'd just like to say that, you know, all those years where I was just playing on the computer, well, they finally paid off. <laughs> Thank you so much. Please welcome Writers of the Future Judge Robert J. Sawyer and Illustrators of the Future Judge Dave Dorman. In our next story, Vector Victoria, a young activist tries to spread a terrible virus to save the world from a government conspiracy. The author, David D'Amico, grew up as the son of a fisherman and commercial clam digger. Now, he spends his days building computers and writes at night from his home in Salem, Massachusetts, the witch city. He developed an extremely useful hobby of collecting and reading the Writers of the Future anthologies, and he has read every one of the 26 volumes, as well as the 25th anniversary coffee table edition. David is working on a novel-length version of his winning story. Please congratulate David D'Amico. <sighs> I'd like to thank um L. Ron Hubbard, Author Services, Galaxy, uh, Galaxy Press, and Johnny Labaki for making me feel like I actually belonged here. Uh, just to show you how well they treat us here, I think I popped a button at dinner time. <laughs> so you could excuse me. Uh, I'd like to thank my uh, friends and family, my wife Anne, and I'd like to say that um, my, bro my twin brother Dean has started entering this contest. So um, you're probably going to be seeing him maybe next year. Thank you very much. When I was younger, learning, learning my craft and making my way as a novice commercial illustrator, I was influenced and in certain cases taught by some of the best names in the comics and fantasy art Names like Frank Frazetta, Boris Vallejo, Michael Whalen, Joe Kubert, Jack Kirby, Jim Steranko, and really too many others to list as I stand here at this podium. Early in my career, I, was even, I had even illustrated one of the winning anthology stories for the Writers of the Future organization, long before the illustrators of the future became part of it. It's an honor to see the fine work submitted to this contest and to be able to pay it forward and to encourage these artists as they begin their journey as artists and illustrators. It's a pleasure and an honor to be asked to judge this year's up and coming talent and to see the future of illustration and what it holds for us all. And now the next illustration winner, when Ryan Downing decided he wanted to draw comic books, he had to teach himself because schools and opportunities were slim in his native South Africa. Later, he discovered digital art, and he extended his skills with different types of digital painting. He studied the philosophies and laws of art from L. Ron Hubbard's book Art, 
which he believes is invaluable to any artist. The comic and video game influence is apparent in his art samples as well as his illustration for Vector Victoria. Please congratulate Ryan Downing. Wow, that's awesome. All right, well, I'd like to say a very big thank you to AuthorWest Services. They do a great job. Galaxy Press, who keeps the books coming out that are always top notch. Um, my family, who have been very, very supportive in what they allowed me to get away with over the years. Um, and especially to LRH. He had a very, very distinct and uh, purposeful need to look into the future. And as a result of that, he's given us the new writers and the new illustrators an ability to do the same. Thank you. Please welcome Writers of the Future judges, Rebecca Mesta and Kevin J. Anderson. John Arkwright's mother paid for his birth by digging potatoes during the final stages of her pregnancy. And later she recited Poe's The Raven to put John to sleep at night. <laughs> he earned a doctorate in economics from the University of South Carolina with a dissertation on terrorist bargaining. John met his wife, Julia, at a Dungeons and Dragons game in college. And they now live in a small southern mountain town with their three sons. Many details of his life in the South help to paint the picture of his Civil War fantasy story, The Sundial, a contest finalist that was chosen for inclusion in the anthology. Please congratulate John Arkwright. Thanks to my Facebook friend, Kevin Anderson. <laughs> I think he is everybody's Facebook friend. <laughs> thanks to Heavenly Father for answering my prayers. Thanks to my mother. Thanks to my father, who is my hero. Thanks to my wife, who is my best reader. She is the most voracious reader in the world. She buys five books a week. She is financially ruining me. <laughs> Sweetheart, I only said it for the laugh, and it worked, so it was worth it. <laughs> Thanks to my gang of three writing group, including Bonnie Jean Robinson, and Barbara Seaton, thanks to Stone Pile Riders of North Georgia. Thanks to L. Ron Hubbard for his legacy. To Joni Labaki and all of Author Services. To Maliva Coach and all of Galaxy Press. To Katie Wentworth for all that she does throughout the year, and to Katie Wentworth and Tim Powers for this week teaching us the craft and the business of writing, and to Tim Powers for teaching me that it is acceptable to write for whatever reason I possess. Thank you to the judges for all the work that you've done, for all the wisdom that you have imparted to us in these last few days. For all those years when we were reading your books, we knew you were entertaining us. We knew you were inspiring us. We didn't know you were teaching us. 
You're very sneaky. <laughs> but thank you for that. And now, before we go on to the Grand Prize Gold Awards, please welcome the President of Galaxy Press, Mr. John Goodwin, for the official release of Writers of the Future Anthology, Volume 27. You've just seen a sneak preview of this year's anthology. Met the contributing writers, and seen the work of the illustrators. We know you're already eager to read the prize-winning stories for yourselves, but the book contains much, much more than that. Because the goal of the contest is to inspire and encourage new talent to teach the craft and the business of writing and illustrating, each volume of Writers of the Future also includes insightful advice from some of our judges and influential members of the genre. As you've heard from their introductions, Several of tonight's winners studied prior volumes of the anthologies, read the essays, and absorbed the stories written by other winners. It gave them an inside track. Our anthologies are widely used in high school and college writing programs. Educators, authors, and illustrators all over the world have studied past volumes, while universities such as Cornell, Rutgers, George Washington, and Harvard have long used the annual volumes as texts in creative writing classes. The Writers of the Future Anthology is the benchmark that budding authors and artists use to measure just how good they need to be. Now, it's time to add one more volume to the shelf. In addition to all of the prize-winning stories and illustrations you've heard about tonight, this year's anthology contains essays by Writers of the Future judge Mike Resnick, Illustrators of the Future judge Robert Castillo, and a classic article by Elrond Hubbard, How to View Art. It is now my honor and privilege to officially release Elrond Hubbard Presents Writers of the Future, Volume 27. As a special gift, all of tonight's attendees will receive complimentary copies of Volume 27. (laughs) 
And to our online audience, we also have a special release offer. You'll get your own free copy of Volume 27, hot off the press, when you order Volumes 25 and 26. <laughs> Just click the link on your screen. Thank you. And now to top off the evening, it's time to present the 2011 Gold Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the contest director for the writers and illustrators of the future, Ms. Joni Labaki. Winning one of the quarterly prizes in the Writers and Illustrators of the Future contest is already a tremendous achievement. However, each year, all of our judges review the prize-winning entries and bestow an additional honor, the Gold Award. And it's more than just an impressive trophy. We will also present the Grand Prize Writer and Grand Prize Illustrator with an additional check of $5,000. And now, to present the L. Ron Hubbard Illustrators of the Future Grand Prize Gold Award, please welcome Keir Graff and Illustrators of the Future Coordinating Judge Ron Lindon. We're having fun now. To be at this event in the first place, each one of the 12 quarterly illustrator winners has already demonstrated exceptional talent and imagination. The Gold Award is to further honor and recognize outstanding artistic achievement even among the winners. And remember, these are all winners. The 2011 Gold Award Trophy and a grand prize check for $5,000 goes to the illustrator of the story, Irvin Rodriguez, for the truth from a lie of convenience. I can't believe this is really happening. <laughs> um, first of all, I'd like to give a special thanks to Joni Labaki. When I remember when I got that call in September and I was just ecstatic. I had no idea it'd be this big. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, art director Maliva Koch. She was great to work with, really pushed me through getting through both pieces for uh, Brendan Harvey. And John Arkwright, thank you for the great stories. You know, sparked my inspiration for both. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the judges once again. Thanks for imparting your wisdom upon us. Writers, judges as well, for the writers. Um, just a word of advice, not that I'm anybody to give any, but you know, we're all winners here, and this is uh, just an example to show that hard work and perseverance pays off. This is just the beginning, so keep working. Thank you. To present the Writers of the Future Gold Award, please welcome Dr. Simon P. Wharton and Writers of the Future Coordinating Judge K.D. Wentworth. Some past Gold Award-winning writers have become best-selling authors, won the highest awards in the genre, and received great accolades in mainstream publishing. Even a science fiction and fantasy contest can't predict the future for tonight's grand prize winner. But, the, <laughs> but if the past is any indication, you've got momentum on your side. The 2011 Gold Award trophy in grand prize check for $5,000 
goes to the writer of the story. Richard Johnson for In Apprehension, How Like a God. I really didn't expect to be here, so uh, I got all my thank yous out of the way early. Uh, what else can I say? I, I nearly didn't enter this competition. Um, it seemed like such a long shot. Uh, the fact that a short story of mine has uh, brought me halfway around the world from Melbourne in Australia here to Hollywood uh, still seems surreal. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have entered if it wasn't for the fact that the competition's free, it's open to anyone, anywhere in the world. You know, it, if there's anyone out there who's, who's thinking about um, entering, or perhaps you've entered for a while and had some disappointment, I mean, keep trying. Uh, this is a fantastic uh, resource for this, the science fiction and fantasy community, and it's a, an amazing testament, and it's an amazing legacy for, for L. Ron Hubbard. Um, I'd like to thank, once again, um, Tim and, and KD, and, and all the judges and, and all the other writers and illustrators that have made uh, this, this week um, so special for me. Uh, you guys are an, an incredibly talented crowd and it's been my pleasure and a privilege to have spent the week in your company. Um, this has been an unbelievable end to an unforgettable week. Uh, thank you all. This marks the end of the 2011 L. Ron Hubbard Achievement Awards and the beginning of another year of creative accomplishments from tomorrow's stars of science fiction and fantasy. Let me also close by encouraging everyone out there who is an artist at heart, keep writing, keep illustrating, keep creating, and take that next step. Submit your story or your illustration for consideration and don't miss the opportunity. You have a chance to pursue your dreams and help build that finer tomorrow. As L. Ron Hubbard stated, we instinctively revere the great artist, painter, or musician, and society as a whole looks upon them as not quite ordinary beings, and they are not. They are a cut above man. He who can truly communicate to others is a higher being who builds new worlds. Please join us now for the reception to honor tonight's winners, past winners, and our distinguished judges. You will have your chance to ask some of tomorrow's star artists and authors for their very first autographs as published professionals. <laughs> Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you all for being with us tonight, and enjoy the rest of the evening.